Alright. Today we have here a brand new OM System TUF TG7. As you might already know, OM System is formerly known as Olympus, and they recently rebranded. So TG6, the former version of this camera, was still called Olympus, and this TG7, their latest on the TUF camera lineup, is now under the OM System banner. I like the simplicity of this box, which is probably a recycled material, that's why it looks this way. Tough TG7 is a compact point-and-shoot camera, which weighs 253 grams, and with a measurement of just 113.9 by 65.8 by 32.7 millimeters. But do note that this is not your usual point-and-shoot camera, as it packs a punch. Or more appropriately, it can take a punch. It is waterproof on up to 15 meters or 50 feet, so you definitely can take this on a chill diving session. It is also shockproof and can be dropped from a height of 2.1 meters or almost 7 feet. That's without any case, with just its bare compact point and shoot body. If you plan to go to cold places, you can also take the TG7, as it is freeze proof up to negative 10 degrees Celsius, or 14 Fahrenheit. If you happen to drop the camera, then accidentally step on it, that's still okay, since TG7 is also crush proof up to 100 kilograms, or more than 220 pounds of weight. It is rated as IP68, so it is also dust proof, and it is safe to bring it to the beach side. In fact, we can say that it is childproof as well, since even if you let the children use the TG7, it will just be fine no matter how rough it is used. It is not theft proof though, so make sure that no one steals it from the children. We have some paperwork here. And we have a very hefty booklet type of manual as well, which actually does not contain any information other than how to put in the battery and the memory card on many different languages. The real user manual can be downloaded from the OM system site though. The sensor of the TUF TG7 is a 12 megapixel half-inch BSIC MOS, which can be found on many cell phones as well. It is anti-fog using double glass with a nitrogen gas inside to manage the temperature and condensation in the lens. We have USB Type A to Type C charging and data cable here from the box. The TG7 focal length equivalent is 25 to 100 millimeters, which is great for a point and shoot camera. The zoom is only optical, which is up to 4 times. And the aperture is from f2 up to f4.9. We have the Li92B lithium-ion battery for the TG7, which is an upgrade from the Olympus Li90B battery. It is rated at 330 images for battery life. The TG7 image ratio can either be 1x1, 4x3, 3x2, or 16x9. And it can now support portrait orientation. Pictures and videos can be recorded up to 4K or 4000 by 3000 pixels, to be exact. We also have a free camera strap here out of the box, which looks really nice and sturdy, and I think the material here can easily dry up, since the camera is waterproof. The maximum shutter speed of the TG7 is 4 seconds for auto mode, and 1 over 2000 second on a night scene. The camera also has a fixed 3 inch, 1 million and 40,000 dots TFT LCD, which is not a touch screen. TG7 has no viewfinder neither, so you will only rely on that LCD display when shooting. There's a bunch of sensors and antennas in this camera too, that includes Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, GPS, e-compass, manometer, thermometer, and accelerometer. TG7 has a built-in flash, a stereo microphone, a mono speaker, and it uses a USB Type-C port for charging and data transfer. It requires an SD card, not a micro SD, but the big regular SD card, to save the images and videos too and it has 9 shooting modes which we'll explore later. You can also buy a lot of accessories for your tough TG7. Like the dive case, if you want to use the TG7 for more than 15 meters deep dives. A silicone case, which I think is not needed anymore. A float strap which can make sure that your TG7 does not sink into the ocean and lose it. There's also an adapter which enables you to attach different lenses to the TG7, like the fisheye or the telephoto lens. Then there's two types of flash diffusers, which are great for macro photography. And of course there's a lot more accessories from third-party manufacturers, and probably more official accessories to come from OM System. And here is the OM System TUF TG7 in all its glory. What a gorgeous looking camera. This also comes in black color, but I think I choose the right one in red. Just gorgeous. We have the BSI CMOS lens and the built-in flash in the front of the camera, along with some branding text of OM System, the TG7, and some specs information around the lens and on the right side. On the right side, we have a double lock side door here to access the USB Type-C charging port, along with the mini HDMI port. On the left side we have the strap holder. Looks sturdy enough to hold the strap. Then at the bottom, we have a tripod mount socket, and beside it is the door access for the battery and SD card compartment. At the top we have the flick switch to log the GPS, elevation and other information in your shots. We also have the on and off button here, along with the image shutter button, the zoom dial, and the navigation dial. At the back we have the LCD screen. 
This is fixed, and it cannot be flipped or detached to the camera body. Then we have all the other buttons and controls here like the menu, navigation, play button, the info, the shooting mode dial, and the red video capture button on top of the dial. This feels really solid and premium at the same time. Before we start using the TG7, I highly recommend to download the user manual first. Just search for OM System Tough TG7 user manual, and the first item in the search result should be from the OM System site, which when you open, will take you to the PDF version of the manual. You can then click this download icon from the top right corner to have a local copy, which you can keep handy. I encourage you to skim through this 266 page manual, so that you will know what you are doing. Everything that you need to know about the functions, operations, taking care, and even how to put the strap, is in this manual. Always keep a copy of this PDF in your phone, just in case. And speaking of the strap, I also highly recommend to install this first, so that the TG7 is secured. I know that TG7 can take a drop, but that doesn't mean that we should not take care of it. Besides, having the strap makes it way more easier to carry the tough TG7. Alright. That's done. Next, let's put in the SD card and the battery. Let's go to the bottom of the camera, then we will open this bottom door here. We have a double lock system here. To open it, make sure that you flip the smaller lock first. Then flip the bigger lock. You will see the orange shade in the lock switch when it is open. Let's put in the battery first. See these pins of the battery, that should go to the inner left side, when you are holding the camera the way I'm holding it now. It should match the pins inside the battery compartment. Just push it in, and it will automatically lock. Now when you are taking the battery out, you just need to push this small latch here. And when you do that, the battery will automatically pop out, and you can pull it. Let's put it back in for now. Push in, until it clicks and lock. Now for the SD card. Make sure that the pins of the SD cards are facing away from the battery, or facing the LCD screen side. Just put it in. Then push it inside until it locks in. If you are taking it out, just give it a push, and it will pop out, which you can easily pull out. But let's put it back in for now. When closing this bottom door of the camera, make sure that you are pushing the edge in. And since we are closing it, we will need to flick the bigger lock switch this time. Then the smaller one. If you see any orange shades on the lock switches, that means it is not yet locked, and it will be vulnerable to water damage. So make sure that there's no orange on all the lock switches, including the ones on the side of the camera. This door also has the same concept. Switch the smaller one first, then the bigger one when opening the door. This is where you can plug in the charger. Then flip the bigger one first when closing the door. Alright. It's now time to open the camera. We just need to push once the on-off button at the top. During you first boot, you will be prompted to select the language. Just click OK. Then I'll choose English and press OK again. Now we will need to set the date. Just press the up or down button to select the year, month, and day. Along with the time. When you are done, press the OK button. Then let's select the time zone. I am on the plus 8 time zone, so I'm going to select that and press OK again. And there we go. We are now ready to use the camera. Let's take the very first picture of my TG7. This is very meta. My TG7's first picture is its own box. Nice. Let's now explore the basic operation of the tough TG7. As already mentioned earlier, just press the on-off button once to turn it on. And also just press it once to turn it off. There's no long press needed here, which seems to be popular with most gadgets these days. And there's also no long waiting time for the camera to boot. We also have a small lever here at the top for offer log. When on log mode, the location, elevation, and other data that the camera sensors can capture are attached to the images. But do note that in log mode, the camera draws on the battery continuously to acquire location data. So I prefer to just turn this off. Then we have the usual lever around the shutter button here as well to zoom in or zoom out. Pushing it to the left zooms in. And pushing it to the right side zooms out. Then we have the knob here to select between the nine modes. We are currently in the macro mode, with the microscope icon pointed to the white line. We then have scenes, which lets you select between five scene modes, and most of these still have sub-modes under them, which you can easily explore. Then we have the auto mode, which is pretty much self-explanatory. B is for program mode, which lets the camera choose the aperture and shutter speed, while the user can adjust the exposure manually. Then A is for aperture mode, where the camera automatically sets the shutter speed and exposure, and the user can manually set the aperture. C1 and C2 are user-defined settings that are saved in these two slots. Then the camcorder icon is for movie recording. You can also record movies on other modes, but this mode enables you to access the video options, like the FPS, resolution, and stuff. Then the fish is for underwater mode, where you can select five modes for underwater shooting. And we're back to the macro mode, which has four modes to choose from. 
maybe other than underwater mode, I will suggest having it on auto mode if you want a less complicated operation of the camera and really just want to point and shoot. Pressing on the info button will loop through the different information set that you can see in the screen. To take a picture, you just need to press the shutter button here at the top. Press it gently halfway first to focus, then press all the way to take the shot. Then to view the pictures you've taken, just press the play button here. There we go. And you can also use the zoom in zoom out lever here to zoom in or out of the image. When zoomed in, you can then press the navigational button to explore parts of the picture. You can go to the maximum zoom out to see all the pictures in tabular view. And when on the normal size, you can use the dial here at the top to move between the pictures, or you can also press the left and right navigation buttons to do the same function. You can press the OK button to view several functions that you can do to a picture or video footage, as you can see here. Videos will have a different set of functions of course. If you will notice, there is a trash can icon here pointing to the down navigation button. Which means pressing that will give you an option to delete the current picture or video shown in the screen. Just select yes, then press OK to delete the file. If you want to return to the capture mode and get out of the gallery mode, just press the play button again. And I almost forgot, when capturing videos, the TG7 has a different record button, which is this small red button here. When you press that, it will start recording. That blinking orange card icon in the top left corner of the screen is the indicator that you are recording, along with this orange rec indicator and timer here at the bottom. Just press the red record button again to stop recording. Alright. Now let's quickly explore the menu of the TG7. We obviously need to press the menu button to access it. At the very top, we have the shooting menu 1 where you can set or select the custom modes, picture mode, and autofocus area. Shooting menu 2 is where you can toggle the settings for interval shooting, focus bracketing, date stamp, picture and sound, and also go through the focus stacking settings. In movie menu, you can toggle the microphone capture, set its volume, and select the default frame rate and bit rate of the video recordings. Playback menu contains options to display a slideshow of all the images, toggle the portrait orientation, you can enter the picture editor, do print order, and a reset of the order below. You can also remove protection from all pictures, and set up the device connection, where you can generate the QR code that you can scan to connect to the TG7's Wi-Fi network. Other settings include a toggle for autofocus illuminator, the manual focus assist setup, and all the other technical stuffs here that you can explore on your time. Lastly for the setup menu, you have the card setup, date and time, language, screen brightness, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth settings, construction menu, and others. We can just press the menu button again to go back to the default capture mode. Now for charging, as I've shown earlier, let's open the side door. Flick the small switch first, then the big one. When you open the door, you will see the USB Type-C port here, which is where you can plug in the USB Type-C charger cable. You can use any standard Type-C charger for the TG7, as the box only contains the data cable, and not the charger brick. After plugging in, you will be able to choose between data mode, as storage or MTP, or choose the charge when you are only charging. You will then see this battery charging animation for 10 seconds, then the screen will go blank. You can press the OK button anytime to have the charging animation appear again. Aside from the animation, the LED light at the top will also light up while charging. This light will turn off when the camera is 100% charged. And the good news here, while charging, the TG7 is still usable. So you can carry along a power bank to charge it, while still using it. Nice. For my initial test, I was able to use the camera the whole day. Not continuous of course. Maybe for around 8 hours, taking pictures and videos here and there. And when I went home, it still has one bar of battery left, which is great. Charging time was advertised for 3 hours, but on my experience, it only took 2 and a half hours from empty battery to 100%, which is another great thing about the TG7. Alright. From my overall first impression, everything looks great. The body is obviously very solid, since the TG7 is almost indestructible. But the one thing that I like to highlight is this grip. This tiny little bump here is really well made. You just clamp two of your fingers here, and the grip on the camera is really strong. It's a well-shaped, well-engineered grip for this little point-and-shoot camera body. As for the pictures, it's good. Most shots are comparable to flagship phones, and some might arguably even better, especially on well-lit environments. Generally, there's nothing groundbreaking about the shots taken on the TG7. They come out nice, vibrant, and detailed. As I've said, like the pictures you'll get from the flagship phones. Videos also have a good quality. Although, unlike cell phones, there's significantly less processing power on a point-and-shoot camera. So you can't rely on software post-processing to do an EIS here, thus the video stabilization is not as good on what you'll have on phones. Due to that same reason, of not having a powerful processing unit, the dynamic range here for TG7 shots is not that good either. 
The artificial bokeh effects, even on a portrait mode, will not be present here as well. The autofocus is also slower, much slower actually, as compared to phones. And it's the same story on the auto adjustment of the shot's exposure. And maybe the thing that you will miss the most due to the lack of post-processing powers, are the shots for the extreme low-light environments, since using the TG7 on this dark environment will render pictures and videos equivalent to what your eyes can see, just dark. Zoom in the TG7 is only digital, and it is only up to four times. Again, there's no processing power here that can fix the zoomed images, unlike in the cell phones, so I wouldn't recommend it using the zoom, as the image loses a lot of quality on each zoom. But for macro shots though, it's a totally different story. I was totally amazed by what this camera can do on macro shots. Just look at these amazing pictures. So, aside from the obvious toughness of the OM system tough TG7, macro shots is definitely one of its greatest strength, but do remember that these are just my initial impressions. Upon the creation of this video, I've only used the TG7 for a few days, and actually just one dedicated day for testing it. So there's probably a lot more things to discover here. Watch out for the full review in a few weeks. With all the given first impressions, the question is, should we buy the TG7 just for a great macro shot? Of course not. The main reason is still due to its name. Tough. Most of us uses our phones when we go to an adventure. A hiking, swimming, mountain climbing, island hopping, or the likes. But since phones are too expensive these days, we naturally want to protect it, and with that protection on mind, we usually miss out on a lot of great shots. But if you are using something like Tough TG7 on these adventures, you can take whatever shot you want, without the worry that it can get wet, it will fall to ground, it will bump to trees, it will get sand, or anything. All of these are okay with Tough TG7. You can abuse the camera and still come out spotless to produce all the good memories you have captured. All you need to worry about is the next adventure. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Nobody air.